Hello there, it's Armytrix, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about pop filters. Something that's been mentioned many times to me over my videos, with people asking me questions about whether I use a pop filter and what mic I use. So in this video, I'm going to be explaining about how a pop filter actually helps your audio sound quality, and how to improve your quality without a pop filter, as well as using something as a substitute for a pop filter. So first of all, what does a pop filter actually do? Well, the point of pop filters is to reduce the p and b sounds that become quite harsh in sound in your recording in the end. It's also quite useful for muffling any background noise as well as that. So does it really make any difference though? Well, first of all, I'm going to do two recordings to show you now. One which I've recorded with a pop filter, and one without. So here's the one without a pop filter. P, p, p. B, B. And now the one with the pop filter. P, 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 B, B, B. I'm not sure if you could tell the difference there, but it's very noticeable when you speak up close to the mic. So if I do something like this. P, P, B, B, B. Now that one was very noticeable there because I was speaking up close to the mic. If I do the same thing with a pop filter now. P, P, B, B. You can notice quite a large difference. The one with the pop filter is a lot less harsh, even though it is loud. It is less harsh and less intruding and annoying, I guess you could say. Now pop filters can come in many different shapes and sizes. One that looks like mine, which is just a clip-on type, which you just clip onto your microphone and just adjust it to how you want with a bendable wire. And then there are also other types which are quite large and which use screws to actually screw onto your microphone, which are designed for specific types. There are ones with shock mounts that attach to shock mounts to cover up your microphone. And there are many different types. Some microphone manufacturers like Blue, who make the Blue Yeti, which is the mic I'm using, have made their own type for this microphone, but I just thought it's a waste of money because it's a lot more expensive than the one I use now, which works fine for me. So is there any real point in getting a pop filter? Well, in my personal opinion, it's only worth it if you actually do have the problem with the put and burst sounds with your microphone, and only if you spend a maximum of, say, £10 on the pop filter. Because it's not going to make a massive, massive difference, as most of the time you won't be speaking that close to your microphone anyway. But if you really need a pop filter and you can't afford to buy one right now, well, there are quite a few substitutes that you can go with. One option is to speak further away from the microphone, but that can mean your audio sounds echoey. Another option is to use something like a sock to put over your microphone as something like a microphone shield, which also works fairly well as a pop filter, but can be too thick and make your audio sound a bit muffled. So hopefully this video should have answered any questions on pop filters you may have had. If you've still got any more questions, don't forget to leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. And if you've got any video suggestions for this, for any upcoming videos, then be sure to leave that in the description too. Yeah, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. If you like this video, don't forget to like it. And as always, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.